Welcome to the Professional Car Washing and Detailing Wash Talk. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest is Brian Mattingly from Welcome Matt. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Where'd you come in from today? So I came in from the great state of Georgia. Uh, our company, Welcome Matt, is based in Atlanta. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, let's get started with, with a little bit about yourself and the career path that led you to where you are today with Welcome Matt. Yeah, I, li I like telling the story, kind of the arc of uh, how we got to where we are today. Um, so we started this company uh, several years ago, more than a decade ago. Um, I was working in software prior mm -hmm. to us founding uh, Welcome Out the Brand. And, and the software that we dealt with was software that was in what they called data warehousing. So storing a lot of data. Um, mm -hmm. We worked with a lot of big, you know, Fortune 100 companies, helping them analyze data on their client base. Yeah. So that's what I was doing prior to Welcome Out. One of the things that we uh, did as a company uh, in, the, in the data warehousing space is we helped a lot of the big box retailers um, expand through the United States. So what they would do is they would take data that they had on their customers and they would do some really sophisticated analysis on that data and that would actually help them to you know, uh, put together a good site selection plan. And so companies like Home Depot or Lowe's, were, they were opening up all over the United States um, using these techniques and this, this data. Um, so a lot of the local businesses did not have access to this. So what was happening uh, at this time in our history in the United States was a lot of small businesses were going out of business when a big box retailer would come into their community, for example. Mm -hmm. So we saw a business opportunity there in that we knew data. And so we said, and, you know, how can we help businesses in our communities that, that don't have the, the same money a, a big box retailer would have? How do we give them access to data so they can be more sophisticated um, understand their clients better, and, you know, compete. And so that, that was kind of the base premise behind the Welcome Out concept was how do we create a solution uh, that helps local businesses gain access to data? Um, mm -hmm. And so with that concept, we actually went out and we built a direct mail product. Um, and this direct mail product had a, a really unique barcode on it where we could track a consumer uh, that would use a coupon, for example, and we could track back to the consumer's household. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if right. I'll just use a, a local hardware store. If we sent you a promotion from the local hardware store, we could embed our barcode on there. And that, back in the day, when someone used that coupon, they would the, the hardware store would send it back to our clearinghouse. We would scan those codes, and we could see exactly where those consumers lived. So we could send them a follow-up piece of mail, a thank you card, or you know some secondary promotion. Um, but we also started figuring out we could learn about the consumer themselves, who was the, the best type of consumer, for example, for that local business, because we knew that in neighborhoods, generally birds of a feather flock together. So if you could identify one or two people in the neighborhood that were shopping at a particular local store or local um, you know, business, that demographic was probably pretty prevalent in the neighborhood. So you could actually start building data models. Um, so it started in the direct mail world uh, over time. We morphed into digital, um, and that's where, you know, this was many years ago we did that. But one of the first uh, clients we ever picked up when we started Welcome Out was a car wash. And it was a really sophisticated car wash out of, it was actually out of North Carolina, I believe. And the guy wanted to learn a lot about data. And so he would use our direct mail programs and things like that. And he called us one day and he said, you know what, I'm putting in this new pay station is what he called it, I think, mm -hmm. you know, or kiosk. And I'm not going to have to have an attendant there with a ticket book. When everybody pulls up to get the car wash to write a ticket anymore, the pay station will take care of it. But my biggest problem is, what do I do with your coupons and how do I get them back to you? Because I'm not going to have anybody out there to receive these coupons. And I said, well, tell us a little bit more about the technology on the pay station. How does it work? He said, well, it's a touch screen and you know, people you know, put, pick the car wash they want and what they want, tire shine and that kind of thing. And so we figured out pretty quickly that we could actually tie some technology into the back end of that software system that ran the kiosk. Mm -hmm. So without now having a coupon in hand, we could you know, have a coupon scanned or punched in at the kiosk, and we could transmit the data back to us through integration. Um, so that's really how we got started in the car wash space is we said, and we were one of the first companies for sure that tied into the point of sale software companies uh, in mm -hmm. car washing. And so we figured out how to build tracking and attribution is what we call it. So results mm -hmm. through the software of the point of sale systems in car washing. And then that's, wow. that's what propelled us forward. And of course, the car washing industry, as you know, uh, automation has really moved in over the past, I don't know, five, seven, eight years. 
And we've been able to really uh, expand our business because of all the technology that we use to talk to you know the various software systems. That's interesting. Yeah. I, well, and I imagine that you know by him by him asking you that question about about his point of sale and and being able to key it in, it opened the door for every type of digital marketing out there. There's I mean, no doubt. There's no doubt. That's exactly right. So, you know, the fact that we can actually deliver unique codes, for example, through a Facebook ad or through a Google campaign and track it back to, to a particular consumer and then retarget them for memberships and um, ask them for reviews and then put them in automated drip campaigns. I mean, those are the types of things we can do now. Um, and it's really fascinating how the industry's changed and, and morphed into this technological, uh, you know, um, I don't know, environment or ecosystem. It's, and it's still got a little ways to go, of course, but uh, it's interesting to see how fast automation's moved into the car wash world. Yeah, well, I mean, and just thinking your and my lifetimes, it, it went from soap, water, brushes, and some, some people at the end with towels mm -hmm. to, to what it is today. No like, I mean, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, unreal. We've, we had a guest on here that if you've ever seen those arms that, that build cars and they weld stuff. Sure. He, ha he ha uses those to do like the, the, the pre-treatment at the front of the car wash now. Nice. And because he's like, you know, nobody wants that job. It's, right. It's wet and it's hot or it's wet and it's cold and neither one of those is fun and it's monotonous. And so, I mean, like the, to go from, from there to, you know, point of sales to automated in bays to robots to, I mean, robots, it's, it's yeah. phenomenal. It is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. It's, Especially it's, for a business that is... I mean, for the most part, is, is a local business, right. and, and I mean, that the, to think that that so much automation and technology would would happen so quickly, it's incredible, <laughs> without a doubt. Well, let's let's talk about uh, one of the things that makes all that technology possible, mm -hmm. and, and that's memberships. I mean, yeah. memberships, are, are, what a brilliant idea! I mean, sure. and 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 it really enables car wash owners to to implement a lot of these technologies. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me a little bit about memberships and what a car wash owner can do to grow their memberships. So memberships, obviously recurring revenue, huge, right? So it's caught the attention of so many people. So many people have gotten in the industry because of uh, the recurring revenue piece. And it has been a focal point for these car wash operators for a long time because now private equity is in the mix. They're looking you know, at certain member numbers, their inflection points for certain valuations and things like that. So it's really motivated a lot of um, operators to, to build member bases. But you know, no member base starts in car washing until someone experiences the brand. So it's all about how do I get more cars on property? Because mm -hmm. you, you can't convert a member until you get somebody to try. It's much like a gym. It's oftentimes people will not just buy a membership without having put their four tires in your tunnel. Yeah, they want yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. And see what, what am I getting for this membership? So, so the idea for, for growing membership starts with how do I get more car counts? How do I get more people to experience the brand? There's a certain portion of the population to this day um, that is not educated on the membership model. So there's a lot of opportunity still to be had on the membership side. I will say with you know, interest rates the way they are today and, and, and you know, sales not happen, happening as quickly in the, in the car wash space, you know, operators are realizing there's other things I need to do. You know, retail washing and you know, the, the retail revenue from just you know, non-members is pretty lucrative. Mm -hmm. So how do I get more of that? I mean, and there's certain demographics um, where a site may sit that doesn't lend itself to heavy membership numbers. You know, there's others that are tremendously great for, for, yeah. for membership. So, so, you know, the membership piece is such a big part of car washing, and it's certainly part of the reason this, you've seen this phenomenal growth over the past two or three years. Um, and, you know, it all starts with how do I get somebody that fits the membership model? And, and I say that because there's a certain demographic that fits the buyer of a membership. So how do I get those people into my brand or into my tunnel and experience my brand? Cool. Well, let's, you know, well, I, I kind of want to ask a question that ties into everything you've worked, you know, we talked about big box stores, mm -hmm. we talked about local businesses, we talked, you know, the communities they exist in. Well, let's, you know, I, I think a car wash is just like a hardware store or anything else. I mean, sure. people look at it as a part of their community. Um, how can a car wash get really involved in their community and, and let their community know that, that they care? It's a really good question. I'll say this. The, the best brands right now at car washing are realizing that, you know, they've got to get ingrained in the community. Um, they've got to be part of the communities they, they operate in. And mm -hmm. whether it's the bigger brands that are regional, um, you know, or the local brands that are, you know, one or two, two locations, they, they know that this is where they can create new opportunity. Um, so let's, I'll, I'll give you a couple examples of this. Sure. I think, um, you know, a lot of the brands, this has been a really hot topic for the past year and a half, is fundraising. So a lot of car wash brands, 
And, and let me back up and say this. Fundraising and car washing has gone hand in hand since the 1950s. There's been kids that stood on the street corner that played on the football team that held signs up and said, we'll wash your car for a donation yeah, yeah. for the football team. So, so it, it goes hand in hand. Um, so car wash operators are saying to themselves, could I create another revenue stream by expanding my fundraising platform um, and, and grow my membership funnel in doing that? And I'll explain this to you. So um, from the fundraising side of things, the biggest challenge for car washers right now, it's really twofold. Number one, it's um, it's very hard to scale. So you know, to manage a fundraising program, if you're going to start one for your organization, it takes manpower because you've got to receive calls, you've got to get people coupons for car washes, you've got to you know get some tracking involved. So there's you know, people dealing with logistics if you're doing car washing on site, which is becoming less of a thing. And, and I could explain that um, for fundraising if you're doing that on site. There's a whole coordination. So it, it, it's a heavy lift on the HR side for a car wash to actually build a you know, a strong, um, you know, fundraising platform. So that's number one. And, and like I said, the second challenge with the fundraising as it exists today is that, um, you know, the liability of having kids on your property is a thing. Like, oh, and, yeah. And so people are realizing, you know, I don't know if I want that liability. So you have these two challenges. And so, you know, there's organizations, we're one of them, that have developed um, some automated, scalable digital fundraising platforms that allow brands to, to grow a fundraising program without having to add HR or having to add headcount. Um, so that's really changed the game. And so what fundraising does is there's really three bullets that it, that it does for, for local businesses. It creates a new revenue stream, number one. So instead of cookie dough and wrapping paper um, you know, that the lacrosse team's selling, they're now selling car washes, right? Yeah. So, so, so you're, you're creating a new revenue stream. And as I mentioned in a kind of a previous question you asked, there's a specific demographic that becomes a member in car washes. Um, and we found through our data analysis throughout the country, we track a ton of data at Welcome Mat, um, in our data analysis, soccer moms and soccer dads are phenomenal members. They have Cheerios in the backseat of the cars, they got dog hair everywhere, they got dirty cleats. These are your ideal members. And who supports fundraisers? Soccer moms, soccer dads. Yeah. So if you're an organization as a car wash, whatever, whatever car wash, and you're, you know, supporting the lacrosse team by allowing them to sell your car washes, you give them half the, the revenue and you keep half. Um, you're growing that revenue stream, number one. You're secondly now in the areas where the ideal car wash members are. Your mm -hmm. name is out there. And then thirdly, you're creating affinity within the schools and the organizations that, that, that are using your programs for fundraising. So, so it's, it's a huge win if it's done right. Historically, it, it was very hard to scale. Today, there's solutions out there for car wash operators to really put their head down and say, how do I grow my fundraising business? Because this will be a whole other way for me to grow my car wash and grow membership. Wow. You know, I mean, and I, I feel like a, a lot more people are likely to buy a car wash. I mean, when, when, my, when my boys were small, you know, they, there were all those things that you bought that you didn't want, you know, like, yep. and I, I guess wrapping paper is one thing that most people need. But uh, cookie dough is something that you, you might buy it, but you're like, oh, man, you know, how much cookie dough do right. I actually need? Right. Um, but a car wash, I mean, how many people don't need a car wash? Yeah. I mean, everybody needs a car wash from time to time. Everybody uh, needs a car wash. And it's got to be a lot easier to sell. It's something people can use. And you also don't have to go back and deliver it, <laughs> which is kind of nice, right? right? Like, the, the logistics of that, right? Yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. If, like if you're, if you're the parents and you're, you, you end up with all this cookie dough, you've got to go deliver it and find, try to catch people when they're home. That's the right. car wash, you don't have any of that. That's exactly right. And, and you make a good point. You know, it's just like, I don't know if you've bought Girl Scout cookies in the past couple of years, but, you know, if you're the girls in my neighborhood, they, the first one who sends me a link to buy cookies where I can click the link and say I want 10 Thin Mints, and, and push submit and put my credit card in, that's, you know, that girl who sends me that first is going to get that sale. This is what the car washing model looks like now. You can send a link, you can put it out in the, in the school newsletter, you can put it out in the, the Facebook group for the little cross team, and people can just buy that car wash. And so it really gives that ability to, to take all those things you mentioned, you know, managing inventory, dealing with, you know, people that don't want it or I didn't buy it or, you know, having to deal with all that is, is gone and, and um it really gives the car wash brands the opportunity to, to get into their communities and grow. Wow, and, it, it, and it, you've got to have a much larger reach too because mm -hmm. you know, when, when you had to physically talk to a person and you had to physically deliver a product to them, there was th that's a limitation. But that's boy, right. you know, if, like if somebody came into our building here in Akron, Ohio, and they could send a link to, to everybody in the building, I mean, there's 100 prospects that took 
two seconds to reach. That's right. right. I tell this. <laughs> I tell this story. It's a, it's a good one. So I I have daughters. Yeah. I'm a girl dad, um, and they're both tennis players. Mm-hmm. And so my sister uh, is. She lives up in Boston. She does everything to support these girls. So if they're fundraising for the tennis team or whatever it is. You know, she'll support them. So now in the car washing world, we can send her a link to buy a car wash. She can buy a couple of car washes, even from Boston, and share the link back down to us and we can go wash our cars. It gives oh. her the ability, or, or the grandmother in San Francisco gives her the ability to support the kids. So it does take the geographic boundaries out of it. Um, out of it. Yeah. Interesting. Well, let's, let's shift gears for a second. Uh, you teach at a university. Can, can you tell me a little bit about that? And and how, how, does, how, does, how has that benefited you even like beyond and out, outside of the classroom? Yeah, so well, well, let, me, let me say this. I don't teach at the university. I do go in and speak. Oh, um, okay. So I, I, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's a really just an honor for me. Uh, my alma mater is Georgia State University in Atlanta. And I get asked once a quarter or once a semester now to go in and talk to the kids about my journey. Um, the, the founding a, a company and the, the arc of, you know, that we've been blessed to, to have gone through to, to where we are today at Welcome At. Um, so I go tell these kids that, you know, story. So I spend an hour every semester, what it is, with the, the entrepreneur students. And the you know, funny thing is I used to sit in, in those seats when I was a senior in college. And oh, I, really? I tell those kids, I said, I was sitting in that seat. I mean, you know, you can be an entrepreneur if you really put your mind to it. And, and so it's really just a pleasure for me to be able to, to, and an honor, really, to be able to talk to the kids and, the, and share the story. And then we do a big Q&A and, you know, love that. I get a lot of good questions. I actually, get, I get a lot of good recruits, too, for our company from, oh. from a hiring perspective because they all follow me on LinkedIn. And if we post a job, I get a lot of kids that reach out to me and say, hey, I heard you speak. And so it's, it's been a kind of a, a neat, you know, side uh, effect of it. But, but teaching is a really important thing at Welcome Mat. And so I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, you know, we... It welcome out our core focus. Culture drives us. I'll, I'll start by saying that. And our mm-hmm. core focus is to help others succeed. And, you know, so we have some great leaders that we're bringing up at Welcome Out right now, some great team members. And so we do leadership training every week. Um, and so right now we're, we, we're reading Good to Great is a, is a leadership team. And um, we've done uh, five dysfunctions of a team. So we, we're really working with our team leads and are trying to groom up our leaders to help them, you know, today and in, in the future in, in their mm-hmm. lives. And they, in turn, take their teams and do things like that as well. So they're teaching their leaders and their groups and their teams, um, you know, by doing book clubs and things like that to, to help people. So, I, so teaching and going to talk at Georgia State is one thing, but, you know, the way that flows through our organization, just teaching and learning and always, you know, being a student, uh, it's just, I'm just so proud of the team to see that. Wow. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just been remarkable to have that. And, we, we're again, we're grooming some great leaders at Welcome Out. I mean, it sounds like it because, I mean, you've, you're, you're grooming your leaders and by allowing them to then do programs they see fit to the people that they want to groom to be leaders, I mean, you're really empowering them. That's, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's, it's been great to watch. Cool. Well, we've kind of also talked a little bit about, or a lot about, tech. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about tech in the future. I mean, you can't even turn on the news. I mean, like ever since, ever since everybody, everybody thinks AI is all around them and it's going to yeah, end yeah. the world. Yeah. But even even beyond AI and what we already have is is phenomenal. Um, what do you see coming in the next ten years in the car wash space, and and how do you see it affecting the way we do business? Yeah, so I'll start. I'll give you kind of three big bullets here. I'll, okay. start, I'll start with number one being data collection and car washing. It's been a topic everybody's quite aware of now, but it, but the idea is if you can capture information on the consumers that live around your locations or commute by them to go to work, for example. And you can capture data on them, whether it be email or mobile phones or something, where you can communicate one-on-one. That's, a, that's, a, that's the start of a great uh, you know, trajectory for growth. Because, you, mm-hmm. you, again, you now can communicate uh, one-on-one with them. So data collection and doing data analysis, again, understanding preferences, how often people wash, um, you know, understanding they like tire shine, they don't like tire shine, things like that. Um, that you can learn about your 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 customers through data and technology. That that's a thing, right? So that that's that's a really big part of tech in the car wash space. And and you know a lot of um, the great organizations are really honed in and locked in on this. Um, so so it you know the other thing moving to bullet two is competition's grown, right? So mm-hmm. there's a lot more. You mentioned this when I we talked earlier. Today. There's, yeah, yeah. there's so many more car washes out there, and competition's really heated up. And the car washes that are going to win are dialed into a few things. I think number one, owning the digital space is a big deal. Um, so if you, your digital assets, whether it's your, your Google campaigns or your Facebook ads, or 
you know, just your geofences around the locations. If you're, if you're understanding data modeling and going out and finding those right consumers, those soccer moms and those kind of things, you're going to be taking full advantage of the technology that's out there. Um, one of the things that we're doing, and I'll just talk a little AI since you mentioned it. Um, so we have, we have built a little piece of code, a snippet of code, that we put out to all of our campaigns. So our campaigns are learning every day who that ideal car wash consumer is. Mm -hmm. And we're using AI on a, to analyze that data to, to help us hone in on data models. So, for example, we can go into a car wash in Akron and say, hey, let's run some digital campaigns for you. We'll drop that geofence out in the market already loaded with that AI to know who to be looking for. So, mm -hmm. so we're 100, 200 days ahead of anybody that would just say, I want to start running a Facebook ad, right? So you've got this AI component in there. We've also recently brought in weather to the mix. So we've built a technology that looks at the weather almost on a real-time basis, yep. and we can drop a promotion based on the weather. So I wouldn't want to send a promotion on a rainy day in Akron for a car wash consumer to come try a brand because chances are that's a wasted bullet. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking through this weather API all the time to say, okay, what's the right, and we let our clients, based on the latitude and longitude of each location, determine what the right weather is. Because in Seattle, you're still going to send a car wash promotion out on a cloudy day. You're probably not going to do that in Phoenix. So you, you're probably going to throttle back in Phoenix because you're only going to wait for sunny days. So we give every location in the country that works with Welcome Out the ability to determine what days would I want to send a promotion out based on the weather and what weather um, you know, uh, forecast would I not. And so that's, those are the smarter tools that help with conversion. And that's some of the technology. And when I talk about owning the digital space mm -hmm. that you really want to be involved in. Um, and couple that with the, the data collection like we talked about because, you know, again, if someone doesn't become a member tomorrow, well, you can drip campaign them. You can talk to them all the time to, and tell them things about value. I think one of the, the important pieces that, that you and I talked about a little bit earlier is just the value of cars, right? I think one of the things that a lot of the good brands are realizing is I need to tell my customers that keeping that car in good shape is protecting an asset that's quite large for you now. Um, you know, cars are a, a big purchase for, yeah. for consumers. And so making them aware that if you put ceramic on that hood, that's going to protect your car. Or if you, you know, make sure you're washing a couple times a week or, you know, even once a week, that's really important for your car. You know, those types of being able to communicate that out through technology is, is a really important piece uh, for, for car washes. So, so again, you know, having data models, knowing how to find the right consumers. One of the things we talk about a lot in car washing is churn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you talk about memberships, you want to grow memberships, three, four, five thousand 5,000 members, great. To do that, you can't have someone come in and then leave the next month when you charge them. Um, so one of the great ways to mitigate churn is to use data targeting on the front end. So again, find that right consumer who's likely to be a member. The soccer mom, is a, that's one of the examples I'm using, but the soccer mom or soccer dad, if you target them, chances are they're not going to churn out because they're the right consumer. They're, so, yeah, they're going to use the product. That's right. And so that's what you need is product use. So, so when, it, when you talk about um, you know, technology and what's happening in the marketplace with competition, you've got to be really good at this. I get a lot of clients that will say, well, I can just throw up a Facebook ad or I can throw up a Google you know, ad or that kind of thing. It's, there's a lot more to the story. There's a lot of technology and automation that you want to put in play. Is it talking to your point of sale? Everybody wants to know, you know, if I spend X amount of dollars on Google, how much is that bringing in revenue? Well, through technology and tools where you talk to point of sale like we do, you're able to provide the attribution back. You say you've got 400 members based on this one ad campaign. Um, so they can, so our clients can really see, um, you know, the, the attribution. That allows you to be smarter when it comes to technology. So I'd, I'd say, you know, those couple points there in terms of the future. And I say lastly, um, you know, what we see, and I think this will show up later too as time goes on, is the strong brands are the winners. Um, we, I see this data daily in it, from, from all the clients we work with. The brands that are, have spent time on growing a brand and developing a brand and gotten into the communities, those are the ones that get the best results on digital. Mm -hmm. And so having a, a brand that you take care of and, and, and that you, you know, uh, build out and develop, that's going to be important. And, of course, that goes with operationally being sound and creating a great experience for that consumer. You, you know, having the member lane, for example, to, to make that member feel exclusive or giving that member, you know, perks for being a member. You know, so running that strong operation coupled with, of course, you know, capturing data and using the right digital tools. Those, that combination of those three things, I think, is what you'll see as time goes on. But, of course, AI is all part of that and, you know, yeah. data tracking and, and weather components and things. All that comes into play for this.
Well, and you, you you made the point about about the you know adding the ceramic to key to to protect your asset. I mean, just in, just since COVID, we've gone from like the average age of a car on the road like eleven point something years to over thirteen years, there you go. and and it's estimated to keep going up from there. Um, you know, most a lot of people that were on leases or trading their cars frequently, you never had to worry about rust. That's right. Like. I mean, I think my first car I ever had in high school, it, it had a little rust. But I, I mean, since then, it was not even something I would consider. But, but now, now because people are keeping them so much longer, that is that is a thing you have to consider. And the average cost of a car being sold is now forty eight thousand dollars. That's right. And so you know, they're they're not inexpensive. So even though your car is eight or nine years old, it it could totally be worth twenty five thousand dollars if it's in good condition. It's, it's, and you, you know this more than I do. It's, it's so interesting to me. It feels like now, and this, I may be wrong, you, you could correct me here, the asset value, like the used car prices are much higher than I've ever seen. In fact, I, I have a Toyota 4Runner, which I bought right ahead of COVID. I think I could sell it probably for more than I bought it for at the time. Like these asset values keep going up too. Is this like a time in history where well, this is unique? It's, it started to stabilize, but, but if, if, if you would have had, a, if it was a 2018 or newer, during COVID, you probably could have sold it for more yeah. than what you paid for it. I actually drive a 2017 4Runner, and one of my sons who works at a car dealership called me and said, can I buy it from you for what you for more than what you paid for it? And I said, well, I'd love to do that, but what am I going to drive, right? Like, right, right, right. I have to go buy another one. That's right. And then you got to pay a premium for it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it only works if you're going to end up walking, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> but absolutely, like, you know, as as car prices more normalize, you know people people are going to need those assets, and mm-hmm. interest rates are higher, and everything else that's going on. I mean, it, you you certainly don't want to lose three thousand dollars of value on your trade if if because it has rust. That's right. That's exactly right. So those yeah. are value statements, and I yeah. think it's got to be conveyed to the consumer. You know, it's like I, I like your idea of the drip marketing to, to convey that because it's there. They're, Anybody that's ever been in any part of the car business could probably come up with 24 things off the top of their head that would each make a good drip campaign. Like, if you didn't know, this is yeah. something you should be doing. Yep. Like, that's a, that's a brilliant idea because yep. you're adding value with not necessarily asking for a sale every time. That's right. Just ingraining that in their minds. And again, going back to the point of there's still a big group of consumers out there that don't understand the, the membership model. For car washing. And, you know, that's an education that starts with get them in there and start telling them these things. Like, you know, that increase the value of your, or maintain the value of your car or, you know, it's it, it, having a clean car makes you feel better psychologically. There's some data behind that. Like telling them these things mm-hmm. will get them to, you know, join the membership and, and, and grow with the car wash. Awesome. I feel like I learned a lot during our, our interview today. Thank you for coming. Good. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. And thank you for taking the time to join us for this professional car washing and detailings wash talk. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest has been Brian Mattingly from Welcome Matt. We hope to see you again soon on another episode of Wash Talk.